All right, welcome back to this multi-part series on the Ox Tool Co. inspired bender with four positions on it. And um, if you've not watched any of the other videos, at the end of this video, I'll have a link to a playlist that shows the other videos in this series. So what we're working on now is the is really the final part, and that's the actual pivot arm itself. And as you see, we're over here on the dual bandsaw. Uh, with a piece of three quarter inch thick uh, flat bar and we're just cutting the notch out and the notch is where the uh, arm fits around the pivot mount itself which is a piece of three quarter inch I'm sorry uh, inch and a two inch DOM tubing you see the notch there you know and how that fits onto the DOM tubing piece that you know rotates around and, and actually does the bending itself so um, and then later you'll see we'll drill a couple of holes. Actually, we're just gonna drill one hole, but this is another one I was working on where you can have multiple holes to get multiple positions in it. Um, so we're just over here on the bandsaw, cutting that notch out. Um, and you see the bandsaw here, the, the Dewall 26 inch throat uh, machine does a nice job of powering through anything really, um, you know, something even as thick as this. So. So next up, we're over here on the um, our little Millwright uh, Baby Bridge Port milling machine, and we've taken the the block that we just got through cutting the notch on, and and I did some work off camera as well to um, to form a a handle boss on the other end. But now we're just drilling a um, a three eighths inch hole. Actually, we're drilling it a sixty fourth undersized and uh, so we can ream it to a perfect fit. So I uh, just use a spot drill there, and then now I've got a 23 64 uh, stub drill bit. And again, that's, that's 1 64 undersized from, from 3 8 because we want to get this, you know, have this be a really nice tight fit. And so uh, we're gonna ream, use a reamer to ream the last 64 of it out to get an exact measurement. So we're just, uh, Drilling into this about one inch. We've got a two inch dowel pin that goes in it and um, So we want that dowel pin to be about halfway into it and sticking out, you know, the other halfway um, So here we're just taking our 3 8 dowel pin and just doing a check and it doesn't quite fit It wants to try to go in there, but it's it's not quite fitting in there So now we're just getting back over into position getting things set back up over the hole where we originally were uh, so that we can swap things out and put our uh, our reamer in. So we're just taking out the 2364 drill now, and um, so now here you see we've got the reamer in, and this is the I've got a full set of these reamers that I got I don't know off eBay or something. I don't think they're the best, you know, um, but they work okay. And, and here you see I'm uh, changing the belt speed because we want this going, turning at our low RPM. Uh, I think I was running at about 1100 RPMs with that drill bit. Um, and then now we're putting it on the lowest pulley configuration, which I think is about 270 RPM. So we got that belt change made. And uh, here we're gonna just uh, fire the thing back up and lube it up a little bit with some cutting oil and then just uh, let the reamer do its do its thing just kind of go in slowly um, and it will make a really nice clean hole uh, the thing about this reamer again is it'd be better if it didn't have such a long shank on it but there's other applications where you would need the long shank so I got the long shank ones but um, so now we're gonna do another test fit and really I need to blow the machine out or blow the hole out because it's got some chips in it but you'll see I you know try to go ahead and fit it in there and um you know it doesn't uh, doesn't quite go in really all that well um but um so we're just making sure it was starting now we get it got it back over into place and we're just going to do a little small chamfer in the hole just to make sure that that pin can slot in and out easily as we make changes in the future um and remove any you know raised burr around the edge of the hole so you see we got a really nice small chamfer and then uh, I blew it out off camera and you see that fits in there and you'll listen here to the uh, the you 
you can hear that nice really tight uh, fit with the suction in the air there and the pop that comes out and that's exactly what we were looking for so now we're just going to get uh, the two pieces clamped up and this is a little bit of a custom fit up here because of the way I've made the bender so I had to do some spacing with some sheet metal and a piece of I think it was quarter inch flat stock to get the two to sit perfectly flat on the welding table because you know you want everything setting up sitting up flat so I uh, got both pieces clamped down and um, I'm using the the uh, clamp there that I got from Reed Eichner a uh, great viewer sent me those so I use those along with several other clamps and different configurations where you know w wherever I you know need them the best so now I got it tacked up now we're just going to go ahead and get uh, get things welded up and uh, just making some adjustments with the tungsten and uh, getting a couple more tacks on it in a few different positions because we don't want it moving around once I start putting the heat to it. My welder is only 200 amps and this is really thick stuff so I got it wide open and you know with that much heat you, you can get things moving around pretty pretty easily but so just kind of welded up both sides and I could have welded it in some other positions but if I get too close to where the bushing fits in then you can you know give yourself some other issues down the road so uh, was pretty happy with how that turned out and um, see we got a nice deep penetrated weld and you know and I had also chamfered the edges of that block as well to allow it to fit in there uh, even deeper so next up we've got a bronze bushing that um, we are using the jaws of the vise to press in I had uh, turned the inside diameter of that DOM tubing on the lathe and I was trying to get it to be about a one thou press fit I think I got it inside that it won't push in by hand which is a good thing but uh, so it just needed a little extra encouragement and I could have used the arbor press or or anything really here but the vice jaws work really well for something like this uh, as you can see it, it uh, just presses it in there um, and it keeps things perfectly flat on both sides you know the bushings uh, perfectly symmetrical and square my pivot arm is is turned you know and faced on the lathe so it's square and you can see we got it pressed in there all right, well, that pretty much wraps up this video. Just going to kind of show you real quick how this fits up. You can see that the uh, the pivot itself, uh, I drilled and tapped a hole on the inside of it with the thought that I would need to bolt it from the bottom, you know, to hold it in place. But the reality of it is, if you just slide the bushing up on the on the pivot boss, it stays kind of up on there by itself with no problem. And you can see how everything fits up here and pivots around. Um, with the, the inner die and, and outer die <clears throat> you can see it's a little bit snug coming off but overall you can just kind of slot it up on there and then you know this is a, a quick change you know bend one position then move it over and bend the next position um, again just as a reminder you can see the overlay here that we're we're bending this v-shaped uh, setup and um, and so yeah so it's, it's you can see it uh, was working out really well um, and then uh, so I'm just gonna throw a piece of scrap in here and show you um, how this works with the handle on it you can slot it up into the first position and then run our uh, this is a cutoff from the actual piece of tubing that I used to bend it with so um, I was having a little bit of a problem with the table move in there but um, you can see even without any heat it bends that around there with with no problem um, when you have heat on it you know heat it up with a torch it uh, doesn't crimp it quite as bad but this is this crimp that you see in the corner of this is very very acceptable to them um, and I think uh, overall you know has has worked out well so um, that wraps up this video and again, if you want to see the other videos in this series, if you look at the center of the screen, I've got a link to a playlist there. Just click that and you can see the start of the video, all the machining, fabrication, all the plasma cutting. On the next video, which will be the last one, we will be showing you a walkthrough of doing a complete bend up of a final product that we'll present to the customer using our custom made jig that we, that we created.